check it out i got a fancy job site lunch today it's fish and chips see yo ray yo. hey i got some extra sardines you want some no thank you are you sure absolutely they're warm dude that is the most disgusting thing i've ever seen my whole entire mm. life man i'm feeling better already <laughs> welcome back for episode 12 of building a house start to finish All right, so we're gonna brush it on here till it looks like wood. On this episode, we will be pre-finishing and installing the siding on this project and doing some other stuff like usual. All right, fellas, there's one. 400 more to go. All right, we're on it. You'll be doing the staining <laughs> stuff again tomorrow. I think if we are, it would be sick. All right, so let's see. I'm out tomorrow. If you missed the video last week, this is an oil-based deck stain that we're putting onto this siding to give it a wood look, even though it's a composite siding. Okay, this is the front. We have white pine lap siding. So if, if Ray here, if he dips his whole brush in there and tries to slap it on there, it's gonna be a mess. You can't do the dunk and run? You can't no, because- You won't the, make it to the end. And you won't you make it to the to... run, you won't make it to the end because this soaks it up so fast, you'll lose too much on the edges there. Right, it'll just go all over the place. Yeah. So we got- All right. The, we got the dip. There's the dip. The drip. Okay, you're dripping now. Wow, all the way to the end. And Tap. And he's gonna do the salt and pepper. Salt and pepper. He's gonna push it real good. Push it real good. Oh, so get it, oh. Get it started down here, right here. Then you just push. That okay, he's pushing down. the paint. You gotta push. He's actually pushing it. Push, push it real good. Push it real good. Oh, wow. Now it's important to be able to do it fast because there's over a thousand square feet of this siding to finish one board at a time. I will say that if you want to do this yourself, don't leave it in the sun too long to dry. You can actually curl up the boards. So we let it dry just enough and then get it out of the sun quickly and restack it. All right, my man Jason here is working on some stairway blocking. What we're doing is making sure we have solid blocking underneath where the handrail posts are gonna mount. They are going to screw down straight through the face of the tread, right down through the top of the step. And we need to make sure that underneath of the finish step, we have nice solid blocking. So we plan where the rails go. Saw cut. So we plan where the rail posts go right now in the framing. We make sure to put sufficient blocking underneath. That way when we screw the posts in, we hit something really solid and we end up with a very strong handrail. That's what I like. Have a good look at that. We got a double layer of some inch and three quarter thick LVL beam scraps. That's gonna make an awesome place for that to screw in. Hey, good job, buddy. Thanks, man. How about that? That's one way to do man, it. Man, you're sweating a little bit. I know, seriously, this sweating with this construction stuff's getting out of control. Yeah, really? I mean, it's just, I don't know. Are you supposed to sweat when you, have, when you do construction? I don't think so. I don't think, not like this, definitely no. not like this. I have my blocking at the bottom and then every four feet from there up to the top, all the way to there. Also put in some additional blocking for a skirt board and a handrail bracket. Right there, some nice solid blocking. I have to plan where the handrail is going to know where I need my blocking and now it's done. And you can see I drew a little picture right here that's sort of a representation of what the handrail is gonna do. It's gonna come up here, there'll be a post mounted right there. It will jog and zigzag and then uh, run along the wall right there. This guy, I don't know what happened to him. Well, I can take a guess. Oh, it's just on your back, it's no big deal. It's no big deal. You, you probably won't feel it at all. While Ray kept crushing the siding with the salt and pepper paint technique, Jason and Jamie finished up some of the trim details that did not get done last week, including these beams on the porch. This right here, call this a kicker strip. Put it down here at the bottom. That way kicks the siding out just enough. 
just enough to match the other rows of siding that will have a similar thickness overlap onto the previous row of siding below. Once this first row of siding is installed, we then measure layout as many rows up as we can reach at once because if you measure one row at a time, you will inevitably get way off by the top. Next, we chalk a line between each of these marks to keep the siding straight, and then we install each of these pieces of siding using spiral shank nails that will hold really well, and these are installed through the thickest part of the bottom of the board, about an inch from the bottom on this type of siding. All right. Okay, Ray, we got to ask you, why are you wearing white shorts today? They're just, they're just old shorts, man. Like, you've worked for me for a couple of years at least, and I, I don't know if I've ever seen you wear white shorts. He's avoiding the question. <laughs> hey, I thought you weren't supposed to wear white after 4th of July or something. <laughs> no, he's trying to avoid it because he knows that painters wear white. He just does it so you can see how much paint he's got on him so he knows how hard he's working. <laughs> That's right. For shorter rows of siding between windows, we use a level instead of a chalk line, and Jamie is using a 15 gauge finish nailer at the ends of the boards to prevent the ends from splitting with a thicker shank nail, as they do sometimes. And he's getting really good at nailing with his hand that's been injured. Freaks me out, but he's loving it. This is one of the inside corners, which I missed in the last video. It's painted the same color as the siding. It's simply a two by two. It kind of just fades into the background. Not really an accent. Thanks, Jason. Nice butt shot. Some of the trickiest saw cuts on siding are notching for the top and bottom of the windows on your siding board. I like to use my finger as a clamp on the saw base to work as sort of a guide to keep the saw running straight on the rip cuts. This helps to get a fast, clean cut. After making any cuts on this pre-finished wood, we refinish the wood on the cuts. And here we are installing that piece of siding or what's left of it. Sometimes these notches take away most of the bulk of the board. You good? Give it a sight, I'm gonna roll it up for you. I think it's good, I wouldn't roll it too much. Like? Yeah. All right, Ray Ray. Before installing the siding over the windows, we install a drip cap over the top of the window trim. This will keep water running to the outside of the whole window unit. Don't pecker it. That was Waffle Boy over there. <laughs> Again, a non-sponsored ad, but Big Stretch is my favorite brand of caulk because it seems to last the best and not crack over time. Once we had all of the lap siding done, it was decision time on the shake panels whether to use the staggered edge or the other side, which is a straight edge. Which one's gonna look better? That was our choice we had to make. And so we did a couple mock-ups to figure out which one we liked better. Turns out we liked the straight edge better. It was less of a log cabiny look, I thought. And so we actually had to repaint all of the bottom edges because we had pre-finished the staggered side. A 1x12 band would separate the lap siding from the shake siding, and we decided to fur out this band with these little shims so that it would actually lap over the lap siding just like a piece of siding for waterproofing. Next, we installed the band to a chalk light and nailed it off with our 15 gauge 2.5 inch nails. We also installed a drip cap over the band and then this kicker strip again to kick out the bottom row of the shake panels to match the rest of them. Then when we installed the first row of the shake panels, we held it up a quarter inch off of our drip cap. And this is pretty common practice to keep it from sitting in water on the drip cap. We attached these panels using our narrow crown stapler that has galvanized inch and a quarter staples. These hold really well. And this is one of the most satisfying parts of the day where you simply just step back and look at the work you've done. Mattress sale this way. Next, we sided this section between the upper and lower roof systems, and I wanted to show you how we leave the siding up off the flashing by about an inch. This is really important for the longevity of the siding. Ray Ray, look at this ladder. <laughs> That's crazy. Why is that spooky? I don't know. 
See up here we're having to cut all these shake panels at the roof pitch to make them line up with the roof as they go up. I'm going to show you how I'm doing that because using your speed square is so short that you could get off with the angle. So what we do is mark a starting point for where the angle is going to start and I'm using a marker so I can see it. And it's a 312 pitch so I'm going to go along the run 12 inches uh, like so. Make a mark. And then I'm gonna go up vertically from that three inches. And that dot right there, if I run from my original mark through that point and make a line, that'll give us a 312 pitch on this cut. So I'm gonna go from my original mark, extend the level through my dot, and that's a 312 pitch. Now you could even double that. You could pull out two feet. Let's go 24 right there and then go up six inches, make a dot, and that should be in this same line. Let's check it. Yep, see my dot right there? So that's a good way to get an accurate roof pitch drawn on a long angle like that. So Arlo showed up today and he's got like a, a new haircut. <laughs> Look at that. I didn't recognize you. Nice. <laughs> it's still pretty long, but it's way shorter. Yeah. And then, boom. Look at those. Same shoes, just new. Can't hide money. <laughs> Except right there. Except right there. <laughs> and a 500 year old tool belt. <laughs> Hey, Don't Occidental Weather, uh, let's see, that it's got to be like, I got it in like, what, 83, this two apron. Wow. 83. He's almost it. as old and as I belt, am. The belt, the belt. Old old. <laughs> what? No way, that thing's 37. I believe right? my dad's got one like that old. Wow, that the thing is older, older than, than me. Huh. That's unreal. Yeah, wow, well, and it still works better than you do. <laughs> I mean, can't help that. <laughs> hey, you know what they say, they don't make them like they used to. Case in point right there. <laughs> <laughs> when you're siding a house, the wide open areas go super fast, but then when you get to a little intricate area like this where you have to make multiple cuts on a single board, it slows way down. So I thought I'd show you each step I had to do to get this one piece of band board in. It's all around us. You got a ground? You got one? I hook a copper wire. I'm standing on a metal walk board. I'm grounded. <laughs> I'm grounded for you. You want it? You wouldn't want it to hit that and then find it. Wow! <laughs> Dude, some guys are just going crazy. Oh, look at that. Look at that. This storm did end our workday, but we were able to come back in the morning and finish the last few rows of siding on this project. And we're really happy with the different textures and colors and how everything turned out. And the homeowner loves it as well. And that's what's really important to us. Thanks for watching our video today. Remember to subscribe if you've enjoyed this video and make sure to check back next week where we'll be doing the mechanical systems in this home, the electrical, the plumbing, and the heat and air. We'll see you then. Dude, I just threw up in my mouth. <laughs> <laughs>